This is the Infinix Note 8, the second Note device from Infinix this year. Equipped with a 64 megapixel quad camera setup, 5200 mAh battery capacity, and MediaTek Yellow G80, it's looking like the best Note device yet from Infinix. On the contrary, it's not. Yeah, I have reasons for that. So stick around until the end of this video for reasons why I think this device might not be worth the upgrade. Launched alongside the Infinix Note 8 is a slightly cheaper variant called the Infinix Note 8i and we'll also be reviewing that device in a later video. What's up guys, it's Victor here again. I have timestamps in the description box as a table of contents to various sections of the video. Please subscribe if you're not and turn on the post notification bell icon so that you'll be notified the next time and every other time I post a new video like this one. At first glance, the Infinix Note 8 looks so much like the Infinix 08 from the front view. Except that the 08 has slightly thinner bezels, especially on the bottom side, and the Note 8 looks a tad taller because of that extra chain on the bottom. The phone is made of a very glossy polycarbonate that reflects light, the same finishing you get on the Infinix Note 7. And as expected in a glossy finish like this one, it's a scum magnet and you need to employ a cleaner committed to your phone alone. So you are better off with the protective case provided in the box. Other items in the box are an 18W fast charger, an earphone, a plastic screen protector, a case, some product literature, a SIM ejector pin and a USB Type-C cable. Yes. Finally, there is a USB-C port on the bottom edge of the Infinix Note 8. Also, you find a microphone, a 3.5mm headphone jack and a button firing loudspeaker which is supported by the earpiece speaker on the top edge of the device for a stereo setup. On the right side are the volume rockers and power button that also doubles as the fingerprint sensor. On the left is a triple card slot for 2 nano SIM cards and 1 SD card. There is nothing on the top. On the front is a 6.9 inches HD Plus left side double punch hole display housing a 16 megapixel fixed focus selfie camera and a portrait or depth sensing selfie camera. Unfortunately, it's not a high refresh panel like we expected. The display bezels are minimal except for the bottom bezel that looks bigger. Anyway, the display looks good despite not being a full HD panel, colors are punchy and contrasty but far from accurate. Nonetheless, the display is big and immersive. However, it will be hard for small hands to handle this device properly. On the rear side of the Infinix Note 8, the camera array looks like Samsung Galaxy Note 20. It's beautiful but I feel it's not original and unique like the camera setup of the 08. The camera bump is slightly raised so it will wobble a bit when placed on the table without the protective case. And why it's looking like Infinix has finally decided to ditch the X-Pen we love on their Note series, the phone still looks good and also feels good to hold. Even with a massive 5200 mAh battery. It's still slim and comfortable to hold. The build and design of the Infinix Note 8 in my own opinion was well done for a device of this class. Battery capacity on smartphones keep going up and the Infinix is a champion in this department. The Infinix Note 8 packs a massive 5200 mAh battery and the battery life is impressive. With a single charge, you are guaranteed 2 days of modest phone usage. I had this phone as my primary phone for 2 days and didn't reach out for my charger. Charging is a bit faster here than other recent devices from Infinix because this one comes with a USB-C port that enables fast charging and fast file transfer. It also has the Power Marathon Tech which is basically an aggressive ultra battery saving mode that remarkably extends battery life when you are low on battery. The Infinix Note 8 runs on XOS 7.1 which is the latest and greatest Infinix custom UI slapped on top of Android 10 with the usual bloatware and unwanted apps we see on XOS. Unfortunately, we don't get Android 11 on board here. Still, SOS 7.1 is equipped with some useful modern features like a game mode that improves overall gaming experience, social tubo for improving and adding more features to chatting and messaging applications, especially WhatsApp, smart assistants for customizing gestures and accessibility features, S clone for cloning messaging and chatting apps like Messenger and WhatsApp so you can run multiple accounts on the same phone at the same time. I really feel Infinix needs to spend more time on software rather than hardware or releasing a new device every now and then. If you think about it, Infinix provides some of the best hardware and spec at a very aggressive price over the competition, but their software experience is just Infinix. If they can remove the ads, bloats and unwanted apps from their software, refine XOS a little and make it a little bit more fluid, then provide at least one software update to their devices. I believe Infinix devices will turn out much better, especially against the competition. So you made it this far into this video. Thank you. A sub to the channel would really mean a lot to me. 
At the heart of the Note 8 is an 8 core 2.0 GHz MediaTek processor. The MediaTek Hello G80, which allows for up to 2K video recording at 30fps, and yes, this device supports video recording up to 2K at 30fps. The Hello G80 also supports a mass display resolution of 2520 by 1080 pixels, but no, we only have an HD display on board. The phone has 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage space. Multitasking is a fluid affair. The phone is fast and furious and should beat the performance of other devices in this class. Let me know which phone or device you want a comparison with the Infinix Note 8. App retention on here is quite impressive and the device is a proper gaming phone on a budget. There is a stereo audio setup on the Infinix Note 8. The sound quality is good and loud but empty in the low frequencies. The sound gets really tiny and distorted at high volume. Because of the stereo separation, gaming is more enjoyable and sound isn't easily muffled out or blocked. Overall, the sound quality is decent. The Infinix Note 8 is equipped with a 64 megapixel main camera supported by a portrait, macro, and an AI lens for night photography. The pictures came out pretty impressive. The dynamic range is okay, but the pictures look very soft when you zoom in. The picture on the left was taken on the macro lens, while the one on the right was on the main camera. So, the macro lens actually works in situations where you need to focus on tiny objects within a tiny focal length. This is a portrait shot. Edge detection isn't well done even with a dedicated portrait lens for this kind of shot. I wasn't impressed with the performance of the camera in the low light situations even though there is a dedicated lens for such conditions. The picture by the left was taken without the super night mode activated and the one by the right was with the super night mode activated. The Infinix Note 8 can shoot videos up to 2K at 30fps and comes with electronic image stabilization called Ultra Steady Mode. When activated, you immediately see it take effect, although it crops into the shot and you lose some part of the frame. That's because the stabilization is electronic and not optical. The selfie camera is a 16 megapixel sensor and these are pictures taken on the selfie camera of the Infinix Note 8. About price and availability, the Infinix Smart 5 is not yet available in stores in Nigeria but pre-order is later to begin later this month. I am expecting the device to retail at about 90,000 Nairas or 200 US dollars. That's considering the competition and other devices with similar spec sheets, like the Redmi Note 9 Pro, which is currently selling at 109,000 Nairas or 250 US dollars. The Infinix Note 8 is an impressive device with an impressive headline spec list, like a massive 5,200 mAh battery, the biggest yet on an Infinix Note phone. 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage space, decent cameras, a fast and accurate fingerprint sensor, a very capable gaming processor, a sturdy design and beautiful finishing. However, I think the Note 8 is not worth the upgrade because you will be stuck with Android 10 with this device when Android 11 is already shipping with some phones. You still don't get a full HD display not to talk of a high refresh rate panel. For the record, this is a powerful and very capable Infinix device, probably the best in their Note series but with some minor compromises, apparently. So if your budget will allow you, you can get the latest and greatest of Infinix's Note lineup, the Infinix Note 8, but if you're on a slim budget and you're madly in love with Infinix phones, you are better off sticking to your Note 7 with the same HD Plus display, the same Android 10 software but with a slightly less powerful Helio G70 processor and micro USB 2.0. The Infinix Note 9 should come with Android 11. Support the movement, support the reform, SaaS must go, SWAT must go. Subscribe if you're not, like and share this video if it was helpful. Thank you for seeing this one guys and I'ma see you when I see you in the next one.